Hi everyone. As a few of you know, one of my hobbies is cleaning Roman coins. Recently, my friend Kevin, over at Noble Roman Coins, sent me a few issues from Colonia Viminachium, a Roman city in what's now Serbia. I've always liked coins from Viminachium. They're a good size, have wonderful patinas, often very interesting portraits as well. This particular coin intrigued me especially because I thought, briefly, it was an issue of Hostilian, an emperor reigned for a grand total of one month in the year 251. Ended up not being Hostilian, but got me thinking about emperors known only from their coins. Some of you might recall how in December of last year, news outlets began to buzz about the discovery of a new Roman emperor from coins, a guy named Sponsian or Sponsianus. He appeared only on a few gold coins, uh, one in Vienna, for example, and uh, was briefly, at least according to news outlets, um, assumed to be a new footnote to the third century. Most numismatists think otherwise. I believe these are 18th century forgeries, but still it's fun to think about how a sudden discovery can add at this remove to our ideas of Roman dynastic history. This sort of thing is more common than you might assume. Take Bactria, for example. We know a few details of Bactrian history, and Bactria, of course, is the great Greek kingdom in Central Asia, um, from people like Polybius or Justin, but our sense of their, the size of their kingdom and of its dynastic history comes primarily from coins, which are found scattered from India to Uzbekistan. When it comes to the Roman period and the Roman Empire, we are, of course, better provided with coins and with everything else. We have much more textual information. But coins do sometimes provide details left out from texts. This is especially true of the mid-3rd century, the so-called military anarchy, the most chaotic period in Roman history. Our literary sources are pretty uniformly wretched for this era, and often we're forced back onto the Historia Augusta, which is more or less historical fiction. Um, so we can use the help we can get when it comes to creating narratives for this era, and coins are often an important crutch. Now, there are a few imperial personages known only from coins, and one of these is Empress Dryantilla. She's known only from a few very poorly made coins found in Austria, and she appears to have been the wife of a short-lived usurper named Regellianus, who reigned for a few months around the year 260. We don't really know anything about Regellianus, let alone Dryantilla, um, but their story is that of the other usurpers of their period, um, proclaimed by the troops, and as quickly murdered or otherwise put away by said troops, or at least uh, other troops come in to repress the rebellion. Another person known only from coins is a guy named Lucius Sulpicius Antoninus, or Uranius Antoninus. He's mentioned in no text or inscription, but around the year 253 or 254, coins in Syria began to mention him as emperor. So apparently he too was a usurper who reigned for some considerable time, at least in the Syrian frontier. Uh, interestingly, most of the coins that mention him come from Emesa, modern Homs. This was the Syrian city uh, that gave rise to Julia Domina, the wife of Septimius Severus, and later to Elagathlus, everyone's favorite deranged emperor. We don't know what happened to Uranus Antoninus. He probably met the same bloody end most usurpers did. But again, another footnote added, and that's always a fun thing. Another emperor mentioned only in coins is Lucius Domitius Domitianus, who appears to have been proclaimed emperor at Alexandria in 297. He lasted, apparently, for about a year, controlling only Egypt, before either dying or being usurped by a fellow officer, who was in turn murdered by Diocletian after a bloody siege of Alexandria. Besides his issue of coins, we don't know much about him. We just have this bare mention. But he, like the other figures we've mentioned in this video, is another tesser on the mosaic, another thread in the tapestry, one more bit of information added to our understanding of the Roman world. If you have questions about numismatics or ancient history, ask them by all means in the, foot, in the comments here and I'll try to address them. Thanks for watching.